It's just a quick heads up to what's happening inside the riser tube. This is with Catrophius's two plates set at an angle of 45 degrees inside the tube. And that's the vortex effect you get, which is really powerful, I have to admit. When I first saw him using this, I didn't think, I thought it was more of a, um, let's say, a swirl. But it is actually quite a powerful vortex. So that's it. That's the extension piece I've just added to the riser tube so that when I fit the next bit it will all work. Okay so I've got to where I wanted to be with this thing now. I took the original top off and I've replaced it with the boiler, the bell boiler I built which is again two bottles welded one inside the other with a plate around the bottom and that's filled with water there's about an inch gap around the inside and it's just started boiling clean burn you can see that apart from all the steam coming out Burns very clean and there's very little in the way of heat coming out of there. This has taken literally five minutes to start boiling this thing. And all that's fueled it was two pieces of 3x2 about 18 inches long and you can see that they are actually there's still a lot of fuel there you can see literally started it five minutes ago the fuel only just got burning the water got up to temperature really quickly so I'm quite pleased the way the jacket performed on this differences are made. I put two of the plates, two sets of plates inside the riser tube um, to try and increase the vortex but really all it did was it kind of slowed the gases down. It was too much restriction in the riser so I took one out. I left the one at the bottom and it's working beautifully now. I've got the two air feeds on the side there. There's, there's one on one side, there's one on the other side. Just creep just around there. It does need these because of the built-in firebox on the bottom. It's perhaps not as efficient as a normal rocket stove at pulling the air and gases through because the flames are directly underneath. There's not the same force of air rushing up the riser tube, hence the reason to create the vortex and to add some more air into the vortex. But it's worked fantastically. I got it up to 600 degrees last night with the changes with the vortex and with the secondary air. Whereas before without them it had achieved all I could achieve was 400 degrees. So there it is, I know that I now know the boiler's successful. Going mental now. <laughs> and if that was connected up to my little tank, there'd be a really good flow of water moving through that now. It would have heated up much faster than the previous set setup. I think because the boiler's now contained as part of the stove body, the heat inside is much greater and obviously the outside of that jacket 
will be hot at boiling temperature. Yeah, since I, when I put the riser, the riser changes in the vortex and secondary air, as it always does. It, there was a clean burn almost within 30 seconds to a minute of light in the actual stove. I had to, because the, as you can see, as the uh, boiler, water jacket, heat exchange or whatever you want to call it, is slightly taller than the top I had on. I just had to put a five inch extension on top of the riser tube inside. Which all I did was I just put a piece of, cut a five inch pipe and just plonked it on top. Again, all this slot is not welded together, it's literally just sat on top of each other. Flues just sat on the back. If everything was welded up tight and airtight, you know, you can argue it'll probably work a little bit better still. But I'm quite happy with that. Okay guys, thanks for subscribing, thanks for the great comments and uh, I'll see you soon.